everybody. My name is Jalu. Um, thanks for coming. I'm here to present Open Voice. Um, ah, it works. So, um, what is Open Voice? Um, Open Voice is really started out uh, trying to be a Google Voice clone. Um, I was a Grand Central user um, many years ago, I guess, back in 2003 and 2004, and really liked it until Google bought them, and um, they were under the water for a while, and then eventually came back. Um, so I started using it again. Um, and when I had an iPhone, I can't use the client on the iPhone, but uh, when Android came out, I was really happy. So I started using Open Voice on Android as well, as well on the uh, website a lot. Um, but there are a few things I didn't like about Google Voice. Um, so, so I thought, okay, maybe I could do something similar to that, um, but without those limitations, uh, Google Voice uh, reinforces on us. So I started this open voice project as my little pet project uh, in my spare time. Um, I'm still doing it in my spare time. So, um, so the, the reason I don't like, well, I love Google Voice, but the, the part that I don't like about Google Voice is first, you know, obviously it's only for US market, so when you are outside the US, you can't really use it, even if it's such a great product. Um, it's closed source. Um, I don't know why Google advocates open source a lot, but why don't you open source Google Voice? Um, then there's very limited um, API access, so what that means is, um, you can sort of figure out some of the basic APIs and do something pretty simple like send an SMS or um, view your Google contacts, but it's not really documented, so you really need to trace a call and figure out uh, how to do that. Um, there, there's no, there's very poor SIP support, so initially they had Gizmo uh, support, but then they withdrew Gizmo from the from the market, so you can't really sign up for a SIP account with Gizmo anymore. So virtually there, they becomes no SIP support. And, and plus, it has no Skype support. I am a heavy Skype user, um, pretty heavy SIP user. I, I use it all, all the time. I actually have a multiple SIP account and Skype account on my Nokia 900. And when I'm sitting in front of a computer, which is you know most of the day, I, I prefer talking to uh, Skype or SIP phone rather than my uh, hard phone. Um, and then one, one, one thing concerns me quite a bit is, is about my data. So everybody knows. When I mean, pretty much everybody has a Gmail account, and you know what kind of stuff they're doing with their with their Gmail. They they might say, I don't know what what are they doing with my you know voicemail transcription, for example. Um, so 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 those are the primary motivations for me to start this open voice project. And when I started, I had three goals. Um, basically, the first one is um, oh, sorry, that's a new slide. Um, the first one is. Uh, open Voice needs to be easy. It needs to have the basic functions that Google Voice provides, meaning it has to have a web interface so you can do it when you're in front of your computer. It needs an Android interface uh, so I can use it as my personal PBX um, on a daily basis. Um, so, so here's the history. Um, it just, I just started in February, um, and then I created a simple Rails app, um, and then in, in May time frame, uh, Craig Matthew, who was the former um, CEO of Teleco, ported it to a uh, Google App Engine. He, he, he and a few other people did a really good job. They spent, like, I, I guess, six to eight weeks to port it, so it had the basic functionalities. And then in May of 2010, um, the company Box Sale uh, demoed it at the uh, Google I.O. Sandbox. Um, and just by the way, some people ask, I don't work for Truffle. Um, and then in, in June, I, um, I announced uh, Open Voice at a MUCAM in uh, Rostock, Germany. It's a, it's a telephony, open source telephony centric um, conference. And uh, so today, I'm, I'm announcing two uh, rather exciting features, it's especially for me. One is uh, initial support for user provisioning, and the other is initial support for free speech. So that's the history. Um, <coughs> Okay, so the first characteristic for open voice, it has to be easy. And uh, um, because of the uh, 
yeah, user reading stuff we just recently added, it is very easy. So there's uh, three steps. You know, the first, you, you go to the website. It's a real estate website, it's a typical <laughs> website. Um, you sign up, and then it automatically provisions you a open voice phone number, which is a virtual number, but it looks just like your cell phone number, phone number. And then um, you go to uh, the phone numbers page, and you can add a uh, number of your cell phone numbers, your home number, your office, office number. And I assume everybody knows uh, how Google Voice works, right? Right. So, so, so basically, when someone dials your open voice number, it's going to ring all your phones. So, so that's it. So, open voice is easy. Um, the second characteristic uh, maps from the Google Voice is uh, is voice on the web, right? Uh, it's kind of like uh, the idea of the uh, of the uh, unified uh, communication system where. You, through a, a, a single web interface, you're, you can you can do messaging, right? You can view your messages, you can send and receive as as, as well as IMs. Uh, you could look at your call logs, uh, inbound and outbound. Uh, there's different type of data you could look at. Um, you can manage your voicemail. You can uh, play the your voicemail. You can view the voicemail transcription. Um, the phone number control. You can add uh, different types of phone numbers. Uh, the regular phone number is like your cell phone, but you could also add your SIP address, um, and then it's going to ring your SIP phone. And uh, profile for provisioning, uh, I'm going to talk about profile a little bit later. And then the server URL, that's more for development purpose because you can deploy it down to different types of servers and talk to different servers. It's all, uh, you can control everything basically. Uh, open Voice is mobile. Um, of course, I spend you know probably 60% of the time in front of the computer and the rest I have my cell phone with me so I want to be able to use this and I want to have a native client to use it with. So that's why um, I wrote a simple uh, Android client. It does pretty much everything the web does uh, except it integrated into your native address book which is convenient. It um, does inbound and out outbound calls uh, so it receives the calls and plays a call for you. It does messaging, uh, voicemail transcription, playback, uh, it's kind of like the visual voicemail um, that everybody is familiar with. And then you can configure which open voice server you want to connect it to. So um, you can use the self-hosted service, in, in which case you just point it to your server, then you can use it, or any other people's open voice server. Um, now, here's the difference. Um, so welcome to the world of social media, of course. Uh, uh, some of us always want to be reachable, right? Uh, how can you be reachable if you have only one single number to be, uh, uh, if you have only one single virtual number? So, so what Open Voice provide you on top of the regular PSTN look like like number, it also give you a Skype number, a SIP address, an IM address. So through this interface, like someone can call your cell phone from a Skype phone, and for them, uh, it's, it's a special Skype number, so so it's free. It's just like you're doing a Skype to Skype call for them. It's free for you though. Um, if you have the call forward to your cell phone, then it's a regular uh, charge, just like any uh, regular uh, cell phone conversation. But um, if you forward it to a SIP phone, then it's just free for everyone. Um, I, I really like the idea of uh, this this multi-channel, multi-model communication. Um, it's it's just to tremendously uh, simplify my life a lot, right? When I'm on the computer, I can use Skype or I can use SIP. I don't always have to dial, take on my uh, cell phone and dial it. And the other cool thing uh, that I did is uh, when I was traveling in Germany, for example, I, I spent uh, 10 euro and got a local SIM card with um, how many minutes they gave me, and I registered that SIM card uh, with an unlocked SIM phone, a uh, GSM phone, so I can use it. And then I have open voice to forward my call to that. So when my friend calls me in California, um, they don't really even know that I'm actually in Germany, but it's just forward me to the Germany and I'm only paying a local um, the SIM card charge for the phone. So international phone call, great. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna explain how this all works, right? It's, uh, it's actually quite simple. Um, so first, um, it, it starts with an incoming call. And as I said, this call can be a PS, uh, PSTN call. It can be a Skype call. It can be a SIP call. Um, and then it goes to 
this thing called travel, and who knows anything about travel? Yes, except you too. <laughs> okay, so what travel is, um, uh, travel is, is, is one of the back ends of, of open voice. Um, travel basically implements a uh, Java SIP serverless standard, and also it does the, uh, uh, the uh, media uh, resource control protocol. What it, what, what's happening is when a call comes in, it, it, because Travel can take care of all type of different like voice calls or Skype calls and everything, and it knows where to route the call into. So because I provision my numbers through Travel, it routes the calls to Open Voice, and when it's basically established a web session, just like real session, except it sends in caller ID, your Open Voice number, and a lot of call session related information. So you are, you are familiar with SIP stack. The call session stuff looks extremely like what SIP provides you. It has like session ID. Oh, go ahead. Is Tropo a company, or is it a set of APIs and open source? Is it a hosting service? So Tropo is a product, uh, and there's a product coming out of Voxel Labs. Voxel is a company uh, behind this. Uh, I believe Tropo is open source. Uh, the Tropo actually sits on top of the media server, which is the main product of Voxel, and that part is not open source. And so back up a few slides ago, you said you get a number. Yes. You get the equivalent of Google Voice yes. number. Yes. Right. Which is provisioned by Trouble. Google gives it to you for free. Do you just drop it or box say it will give you a free the, the, the next uh, slide will explain oh, okay. that this whole thing. Right. So um, so after I, after Open Voice received all the information uh, of the call from Trouble, it's going to do, the first thing it's going to do is going to try to locate the Open Voice user. And because I have the Open Voice number, I can easily locate the Open Voice user. And now, I am uh, the open voice is going to screen the caller. What that does is, uh, for the for 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 the caller, um, we're going to say, hey, uh, please report the name uh, if the name has not been recorded in open voice system. And uh, and after the caller we uh, report the voice, it's going to call the open voice user um, on all the phones that's registered, right? So if if you, you register three phones, and all of them will ring, right? Uh, as long as you specify the phone as four phones. And then the open voice user will pick up the phone and then will listen to the, uh, the recorded caller name, which is caller announcement. And then based on um, their availability, they could press one, and then that's answering the phone, and then the caller and colleague will be connected. If they press two, and it's reject the phone call, the caller will be directed to voicemail system. And if they press three, uh, the caller will be rejected and direct to voice system, voicemail system, and then will be asked to record a voicemail. But the caller is not hanging up. It's actually listening to the voicemail while it's being left. And then if they choose to, they can press star and have to activate listening in mode, and then get into the, the, the actual conversation and start, um, start to talk. So, so this is a, a very basic uh, flow of what Open Voice does, which is similar to what Google Voice does. So now, to answer your question, <laughs> uh, how can I make Open Voice more open? Because that's what it's supposed to be. Um, um, I, I, I created a word called Tropical Awesomeness, but it's pronounced Troposomeness. Um, troposomeness comes with a price. So the awesomeness comes with there's 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 similar vendors out there that provide similar services that I could choose, but there, there's a couple reasons why I, I went with Trouble. First, first is it's free for development. So there are two modes, right? Uh, development mode and production mode. In development mode, I can get numbers for free. Um, the minutes don't cost me any money. The SMS doesn't cost me any money. The IM doesn't cost me. But in production, they will cost me money. Um, but I'm developing it as an open source project, so I'm in development mode. Right? So that's one reason, financial reason, basically. And the second reason is, um, is multi-model. Again, I, I really, if I have de developed a collecting application, and every time I want to make a test, I have to pick up my phone and dial the number, I'm going to go insane. Right? What I want to do is, 
I use my sky or sit client, I just click group call, and then I can test. So, so if a service provides something equivalent to that, I will consider it. But if not, I'm going to stick with trouble, right? Because of sky, and sit, all these kind of uh, awesomeness that you bought. So, so then come back to the openness. Um, the awesomeness comes with a price. Um, but I do want to make Open Voice a framework that's open to a different type of collecting engines, right? So the first one I'm choosing to, uh, to support is uh, Free Switch. Um, so a little bit of history about Free Switch. Um, so a long time ago, there's this awesome PBX that a lot of people use is called Asterisk. And uh, Asterisk uh, is, is an open source project uh, only backed by this company called Dijon. Uh, and uh, Asterisk is, is great. Um, but then people in the Asterisk development community uh, realized some stability problems. And uh, one of the lead developers, I think he was actually the second or the third uh, top contributor to Asterisk, decided to redesign and rewrite an entirely new PBX, and that is Free Switch. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to support Free Switch first. Um, the scalability is great. Uh, and then there is a, a different type of programming paradigm um, that I can leverage. So, so that's why I flip the switch to free, as in free switch. So what's the world look like after I uh, flip the switch? Open Voice now needs to understand um, different kind of backbones, whether it's Truffle, free switch, and possibly more in the future. Um, so it, I, it, I introduced the concept of Open Voice Profile. What Profile is it's really just containing the provisioning information from specific backend. <coughs> it could be something like Trouble. It could be like a soft switch, like free switch. As long as it provides me user provisioning information, I can use it. So this is what the, uh, the kind of uh, the overly simplified architecture looks like for open voice. So incoming call comes in. It can either go to Trouble or go to Free Switch. It uh, doesn't really matter to me. <coughs> um, both will direct information to open voice. Uh, the most important information, the call session information, like the caller ID, the destination ID, session ID, the, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then open voice will locate the user, look into all the possible profiles that a user have and take uh, specific actions based on your, uh, uh, your preferences. So what the support of free switch, like uh, what we can do today is, um, for example, when a Skype call comes into Trouble, which is free, goes into Open Voice, Open Voice locate the user, look at all the profiles, see the Trouble profile and see, oh, there's uh, like a couple of PSTN numbers, let's bring that. Look into free switch profile and find oh this user is actually registered with my uh, free switch kind of zip part zip server so it's a free switch address and let me ring that and then if there's an endpoint or a soft phone actually registered with free at the time that will ring as well so all your um, hard phones soft phones will ring and then are managed by your own um, telcos or um, my free switch. And then if you pick it up uh, from the free switch, so that's a soft phone to soft phone uh, endpoint end call, right, um, from uh, Skype to, to, let's say, Blink. So that's a free call. Um, <clears throat> we are still leveraging the multi model capability provided by Trouble, but we're conducting a basically SIP to SIP call. <coughs> And what I'm going to add in the future is uh, mod GSM and, and mod uh, Skype open support. So what this does is basically uh, free switch will be able to talk to uh, PST and gateways and receive GSM or place GSM calls. And then it will also be able to handle uh, Skype just like um, what Travel is doing today. Um, as far as the communication between open voice and free switch goes, uh, thanks to free switch that provide a fantastic event system. So basically, anything happens internally in free switch is an event. Uh, there's two type of events, internal and external event. Um, free switch can sit there and run a process as a daemon. 
and listen to whatever uh, events coming from outside of the world. So the open voice can tell free switch, OK, execute this type of dial plan, do this and do that, they will do it. Or uh, something happens within free switch, such as a caller calls into the free switch. Free switch can have all kinds of res uh, restrictions, like say, OK, I want to reject you, OK, I want to accept you, but I want to, well, I want you to execute this app, which is extremely uh, uh, useful for, uh, for business, uh, or hotel, restaurants, those kind of logic. And then Rob Powell will open voice and execute. So, so here's the thing, right? If you want convenience, existing functionality, and everything, you big trouble. It, it's all done for you. It, it's a great package. Um, if you want the fine control, like the godlike power to your phone system, <laughs> you you, and then you have time and the interest to spend. Then, like me, uh, you. You start playing with free switch. It's a uh, it's a very awesome program. Next, um, okay. So I've been talking a lot about the, the uh, server APIs, um, but then there's um, client APIs are very important as well. So I, I basically the client API is really built just so that right now I can have a demo app on the Android client. Um, the uh, uh, the basically APIs are. Uh, very straightforward, right? A user creation, you can create a user. Um, authentication, which is required. Yeah, a user has to be uh, authenticated to the system before they can make any kind of uh, constant uh, calls or messaging. So you can send messages, retrieve messages. You can um, place outbound calls. Uh, you can manage your call records, like inbound, outbound, uh, how long does the call take, etc. Uh, you can manage your, your voicemail, including the uh, visual voicemail transcription. Uh, it's very basic set of API, and then uh, it's written in real, so adding API is uh, pretty easy. Um, and the future. I only have a short list right now. Actually, I use Pew Protractor, so there's a lot of backlog stories inside, but these are the main ones. Um, the full support for Switch is, uh, is on top of the list. Uh, iPhone and Mego clients, I I'm pretty passionate about um, Mego, so now it's Mego. Uh, Got to support that, right? And uh, probably everybody has an iPhone here. Uh, and then the conference, conferencing capability, uh, which is being asked in the field. So I'm going to support that. And just anything else, um, people may come and ask. Um, there's people asking for um, maybe use, possibly use this for a rescue mission, for example, where there's no um, cell tower reception in. The app where the accident happens, and they want to go out to the end, just have like local wireless mesh network, and then use uh, open voice for the, uh, the, the rescue um, service so people can actually talk to each other, and then everybody will be equipped with an uh, open voice client phone, um, and then they can talk to each other, but they don't have to talk to the outside world. Uh, and here's more information. Uh, the most important one is the uh, open voice. Uh, GitHub account. Uh, you can find the Rails uh, app. You can find the uh, Google App Engine port. Uh, you can also find the Android client. And then if you go to the, if you create an Open Voice account and then you download the Android client, you go to the download section. There's a little barcode thing. You just scan and then it will directly download it to, to your phone. Um, it's not in the market. Uh, I don't even know how to put stuff in the market. And then uh, there's a couple blogs about it. Um, back in from back in May when we uh, announced it, um, and then lastly, uh, I hold a SF telephony meetup. So if you guys are in the area, um, definitely um, let me know. Um, we have speakers talking, and we're just come and hang out, eat pizza, and drink beer. Uh, very welcome. So I, I might be ahead of time. Um, your head, your head. Okay. So so is there any questions? Free switch isn't so easy to set up. Uh, is the idea you'll also package that up and make it easier? I was thinking about it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if that will happen uh, because I've seen um, I've seen other similar. For for example, um, Open Voice speaks to free switch by the socket, right? Um, but it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it natively. It, it relies on uh, the Ruby Jam, a free switcher. Uh, what it does is really just parsing 
um, the Ruby APIs into the command that FreeSwitch understands. Um, so it might be make more sense if that is bundled with FreeSwitch rather than Open Voice is bundled. And, and also, when it comes to free switch side of configuration, like open the voice will do part of the configuration job. But free switch might be take care of some kind of border control, right? That's beyond the scope of open voice. So currently I don't have any plan to bundle any type of I'm not gonna handle um, trouble for example. Well I didn't mean you would do it, it's just for it to actually work for somebody that doesn't know free switch is kind of a learning. Right. So um, I, I, I couldn't get online with the, with the uh, iPad. Oh, you were going to do a demo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, no. Um, but if you go to the GitHub uh, README, um, and open, so open Voice can actually be used in two modes. One is self-hosted, which is uh, ideal for a lot of people because uh, if you have a private business like kind of with sensitive information you don't want people to know, um, you host it yourself. Nobody will know. But I also have a um, openvoice.heroku.com uh, free website for people to play with. Uh, don't use it for anything serious. I'm like pushing to it all the time. But that's that that's the idea. So that instance is actually hooked with a free switch instance that I've configured. Um, so you can use it that way. And now you have one minute. Oh, okay. So any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.